What is up guys? So we are at Wade Mountain running the Devil's Racetrack Backyard Ultra Loop in preparation for our next race, the Zombie Backyard Ultra in Pelham, Alabama. And I'm kind of trying to build some confidence from our shit show that we had at Warhorse. But we're gonna be out here for the next eight hours running four miles every hour on the hour. Whenever we get back from our four mile loop, we won't start the next one until the next hour starts. And I figured I would give you guys some tips on Backyard Ultras. I ran my first one back in April. Definitely not an expert, but I did learn some things that maybe you can avoid if you're doing your first backyard ultra. And yeah, I was looking for videos on tips for backyard ultras whenever I was prepping for my first one and didn't find any. So I figured I could share with you guys some tips and I will do that after every loop. Okay, so tip number one is a really basic one and it can apply to so many different distances, not just backyard ultras, but it is to run your own race. It doesn't matter if you come in every yard at 58, 59 minutes, as long as you're coming in and under an hour, you are still in the race. Don't feel like you have to keep up with anybody. Don't feel like you have to run each yard fast at all because you can get away with tons and tons of walking and just saving your energy and your legs for later on in the race. So tip number one is going to be run your own race. Okay, so watch settings, it's gonna be all about personal preference. But for me, I like to start my watch at the beginning of the race and just let it go the entire duration of the race. Many people may like to start their watch every yard and then stop it after every yard. I just don't want to come in at 59 minutes and have to worry about stopping and starting my watch if I'm like, if I don't have any time. And for me, during this type of race, I like to show my pace so I know I'm not walking too slow or I'm not running too fast. I also like to be shown the time of day because I know, hey, I need to be back before the top of the hour. And also you can set landmarks, like the first few yards you do, you'll be like, okay, uh, halfway in, I've been here at 11.30. So it took me 30 minutes to get here. So you know in the later yards if you're running behind on your normal time or not. Also, I like to just set a distance for fun. And it's gonna get skewed by you walking uh, around, maybe going to the bathroom or just walking around <laughs> around your campsite or whatever. But yeah, those are the data points I like to set my watch at during these types of races. Okay, so the cool thing about these races is they're made with both trail runners and road runners in mind. If you prefer one or the other, you are in luck because the first 12 hours are gonna be on the trail 50 miles and then the next 12 hours will be 50 miles on the road and then they just keeps on going every 12 hours they alternate so if you prefer one or the other you are in luck but if you prefer running on the roads you're also going to want to implement trail running into your training and vice versa if you prefer the trails you're going to want to get some road miles in too so your legs are used to the pavement and stuff but yeah that's really cool about these races in the last race i did it did not make it to the night portion but for this next race i plan on bringing another pair of shoes road shoes for the road and yeah that's just something to keep in mind some people may prefer to just wear the same shoes the entire race but i plan on switching shoes for each each portion your goal for this race is really important maybe you're trying to run your first marathon your first 50k your first 50 miler and so on and that's cool or maybe you're using this race as a training run for an even bigger race these races are kind of known for just testing your limit seeing how far you can go because this race will go on forever until there's only one person remaining or until no one finishes a loop and i believe like the record in one race was like 80 plus hours maybe 83 hours which is three and a half days, which is insane because that's every hour on the hour. And whenever I'm going out there with the mindset of testing my limits, I'm really not trying to set any kind of distance goal because I think whenever things get hard and you set that distance goal, maybe I'm at 50 miles and I'm struggling and I'm like, okay, let's make it to 100. Whenever I make it to 100, if I make it to 100, then I'm probably gonna be likely to quit because I set that B goal. 
whenever maybe I had 10 more miles in me, maybe I had 20, 30, 40 more miles in me. You, you really have to decide what your goal is before you go into this race if you really want to set your limits. Or maybe you're using it as a training run, who knows. So nutrition and how you're going to feel yourself during the backyard ultra is really important just like it is with any other ultra marathon and using your nutrition testing it out during your training so you can find out what works for you and what doesn't work for you is very important on this eight hour training run we're doing i'm testing out different forms of nutrition that i don't normally do i usually like using tailwind but i'm trying to get away from that because i just want to stop buying bags of tailwind so on this run i'm feeling myself with power Powerade, Coca-Cola, water, and club chips. And that's working out pretty well for me right now. But yeah, just having a plan, testing out your your nutrition plan leading up to the race is very important. Also, I know I'm trying to make it as far as I can in this race. And I know I get very tired and irritable during the later hours. Sleep deprivation, it does me in. So I'm gonna try to use caffeine as a tool. So I'm weaning myself off of caffeine. Uh, and leading up until the race so I can use caffeine as a tool during the race because I like drinking my white monsters every day a lot of people like coffee every day I like white monsters so I'm gonna cut those out of my life for the next a week or so before the race so I can hopefully use caffeine as a tool during the race but yeah nutrition is a very important part of the backyard ultra just like any other ultra marathon So what do you need for a backyard ultra? I mean, it's just like any ultra marathon. You'll probably need an extra pair of shoes, a few extra pairs of socks, and then just all of your nutrition. You're doing a four mile loop and coming back to the same spot. So you don't even need a crew. A crew is pretty priceless. They can just do the little things for you. So you can just save some time and not waste any energy doing like small stuff. But a crew isn't even needed for this race for you to do really well. A lot of people bring a beach tent and a chair to sit under the beach tent in the shade in between each loop and yeah that's pretty much all you need maybe a cooler for to keep your drinks cool and stuff but maybe you don't even have to bring a beach tent maybe you can find someone and share their beach tent with them although you got to keep in mind if you make it farther in the race than them they may pack up all their stuff and leave so it probably would be better to have your own so you don't have to like rely on someone but yeah those are pretty much all the things you need for a backyard ultra it's pretty simple you're doing a four mile loop coming back to the same spot so you can keep all your stuff there you don't have to move it from like different aid stations so it's really nice and really convenient All right, so we just finished the eight hour training run. I'll put that on the screen. We got 31 miles. It was a little under a four mile loop each hour, but that's okay because it was just a training run. A nice 50K has a training run. I definitely did build some confidence after the disaster that was the Warhorse Ultra that I did a couple of weeks ago, and my body felt great. I kind of did lose it mentally being out here all alone for eight hours, just running in a circle, but that's okay. But hopefully this video found you if you're looking for some tips for a backyard ultra i know i was looking for tips before i ran my first one back in april and didn't really find anything so hopefully this brought you some value if you were looking for this video and if it did hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next video